Yo, question to you. How do you meet women these days? Uh, I talk to guys all the time for our elite workshops, so I get to know guys on a deeper level basically every day. You know, it's hundreds of guys a year that talk to me about their dating life and what they want to change in it. I often hear the frustration and I hear how guys don't have a lot of income streams socially and they're often stuck to one or maybe even zero, you know, and the one they have, they're very frustrated about. Maybe they are only relying on Tinder and it's not getting them the results they want. Maybe they DM people online without knowing them. Maybe they hope that one day their dream girl walks into their university class and sits down next to them, you know, so they're only uh, relying on their immediate social circle. Or the only way for them to meet women is going out, getting smashed in bars and hoping to wake up next to someone the next morning. As I said, talk to hundreds of guys on discovery calls. I have dozens of clients every year that I help through the process and basically help revamp their dating life, get way more women into their life and out of that, hopefully uh, find somebody they really want to spend time with. And you might be surprised, like through my uh, incredible life that I currently have, I, I'm very lucky that I meet very wealthy people and I'm talking about nine figures, 10, 10 what is a billionaire, 10 figures, <laughs> uh, nine and 10 figure kind of guys who made the same mistake. They thought, okay, once I have 100 million, once I have 200 million, once I have 500 million, once I have a billion, surely women should be zero problem for me. And you might be surprised. Of course, can they use their wealth uh, to attract women easier into their life? Absolutely. But once you're at that level where everything is like five stars, you know, you drive the best car, you live in the best house, you eat the best food, you can fly private jet, uh, you obviously want to have five star girls as well or basically top of the top, you know, and do those women just fall into their lap just because of their bank account? No, absolutely not. Because imagine you work all your life again with that fallacy in your mind that, you know, build it and they will come and then they don't come. Uh, it can be very frustrating. So you have to be as strategic about your dating life as you would be about your business life, about your income streams and so on. Now in this mini series, I wanna explore the different options to meet women. And we're gonna start off in the first part of the series with online. So online is obviously a thing and online is not only a thing, it is the thing it seems these days. Most people seem to be meeting online, which is kind of crazy still, considering that uh, it's still relatively new and has been quite strange like 20 years ago to meet somebody online and that totally shifted. Uh, I got a study here uh, or just a short text that says, in 2017, they found out that 39% of heterosexual couples reported meeting their partner online compared to only 22% in 2009. So within eight years, it doubled. And that was 2017. Now we're in 2022. That's kind of crazy. Now, when we talk about online, let's talk about two different things. Dating apps and social media slash Instagram in general. You know, I, I know there's a lot of different dating apps for different people and for all sorts of folks. Uh, let's talk about Tinder since it's the market leader. Now Tinder for sure helped a lot of people find a partner in the past, but let's be honest, I think it also led to a lot of frustration. At least when I talk to the guys that I work with, they are kind of relying on Tinder, they're frustrated, then I help them meet people in the real world and it changes their whole reality because suddenly they're not relying on a simple like uh, swipey app and on their phone which kind of makes you depressed just like using it but the whole world opens up to them but let's talk about Tinder and the main thing you gotta understand that Tinder is a company and it exists to make money the success of Tinder is calculated in dollars nothing else not the number of users even, uh, not the number of matches, not the level of uh, good emotions that it creates between uh, couples, not the number of beautiful, powerful, uh, healthy relationships it creates. None of that really matters to Tinder. What's important in the end is how many dollars does it make. And everything you experience on Tinder 
leads back to that. And I've done a lot of experiments. Uh, actually, in the last two or three months, I worked with a researcher together who kind of uh, took over my Tinder to explore different profiles, experiment uh, with one profile that spends money and one that doesn't and the different results it gets. And it's quite shocking to say the least. I'm actually preparing a longer kind of webinar on that topic. So more to that later, subscribe and like. But the reality is they want to make dollars, which is fine if you have and you spend some, but the problem is how they play with your happiness, with your dopamine, with your habits in that sense. Because what do they want you to do? They want you to spend money. Okay, so they give you a little bit of dopamine at the beginning, you know, you create a new account. I'm sure you guys know this feeling if you've used Tinder before, you create a new account and you get some of really hot girls and you maybe even get a match with one of the hot girls. Uh, what Tinder is doing there is it shows your profile to as many girls as possible to hook you. you wanna, they want you to hook to the app. They, want, they don't want you to install three other apps because you get frustrated in the first five minutes. So now you're hooked and now you swipe, swipe, swipe and kind of dopamine wears off. Now they pitch you something that has the potential to give you that feeling back. And you're craving this feeling because it's deeply rooted. You want to meet someone beautiful. You want to interact. You want to be social. You buy the whatever the premium subscription or super likes or whatever it is that is the newest package. And then as soon as you buy, you get rewarded. Not because your profile is so hot or you, you are such a good texter. No, because you spend dollars because you get, they got your credit card details now. Basically, they give you a little bit of dopamine back, it wears off again, and so on, until you get another hit, another hit, another hit. They turn into your drug dealer, basically, and you are a drug addict if you are constantly on Tinder. Sorry to burst your bubble. Here's some stats I found about Tinder, which might be interesting. Uh, okay, revenue is going up. Good, good job, CEO. Uh, users going up, which obviously leads to more revenue. Now, this surprised me here. Tinder gender demographics in the US as well as the UK. 24% female, 75% male. In the UK, 9% female, 89% male. I don't know why there's such a big difference in the US versus the UK, but this gets me to my next point. The odds are stacked against you on many levels, right? As we see here, way more men than women already on the platform. I mean, that just is a fact uh, mathematically. For every woman, there's nine guys on Tinder, right? Women have way higher standards on a dating platform than men. Even though there are a lot of men, they are not choosing any of them. They're only choosing like the top 10%. So now you're hoping to get one of the 10 to 25% of women, but those women already by definition rule out 90% of men as well. On top of that, if you're not spending constantly money, it's not a lot, but if you're not constantly kind of uh, rewarding the algorithm with your dollars, your odds also get stacked against you on a technical basis. So it's just math, it's women's psychology, and it's the fact that Tinder is a business and wants your money. So ask yourself the very uncomfortable question. Are you considering yourself look-wise? No, per Let's not talk about personality. Let's only talk about looks, your photos, your cheekbones, your abs. Do you consider yourself in the top one or two percent of men and if not why are you wasting your time on tinder sorry to break it to you that way you know but if you are by the way in the first top one two percent congratulations you won the lottery and you probably have no reason watching this video because you're probably crushing it on tinder because all those women are probably in your inbox i assume I'm not in the top one or two percent, you know, I'm a little bit short and my beard isn't fully grown and I have a little bit of a gut that I'm uh, trying to fast away and work out away. And my hairline is already a little bit receding, but that's okay <laughs> because I'm not relying on Tinder. I got many other social income streams that I, I work on and that I'm very strategic about. So my dating life is A-OK -okay so far. Then you should do something else. So moving on. The other thing, other than dating apps, is social media in general. And when I talk about social media, let's talk about Instagram, because it's the, one of the most active users, the most attention is there, people use it the most. And it's kind of the best in terms of like messaging, interacting, and so on. Now, when I said Tinder is the biggest dating app, I was lying. Instagram is actually, actually the biggest dating app. Why is that? More people are using it, and let's be honest, people who use Tinder 
if they're at least a little bit strategic about it and not just like mindlessly scroll and just waste their time, then they're either using it to get sex slash dates slash female slash masculine attention or to make money. So it is then by definition the biggest dating app in terms of users and uh, interaction. Now, as you probably guessed, I'm not the biggest fan of Tinder. I barely use it. I maybe go on two dates a year off it. And when I mean dates, it must be in the radius of my home because I don't want to risk getting catfished or wasting my time with somebody who looks totally different than on their photos. I do use social media though, to get dates, to improve my dating life, to get attention and to basically, uh, yeah, get women in my life and manifesting that. And I think Instagram is much better for that for several reasons. First of all, you're not relying on, what is it, five to 10 photos, short little bio text and maybe your favorite song. You can actually, if you know how to, you have visual storytelling, let people know who you are, um, communicate with them, right? React to stuff, uh, put stuff out that other people react to because they resonate with it and so on. So there's way bigger, like socially, way bigger opportunities to really put yourself out there and not just a very like photoshopped curated image of you. You know, you can be more of yourself on Instagram. I always want that people are themselves and I'm, in my coaching sessions, I basically explore how can you improve your dating life while at the same time being yourself and not putting on the mask of somebody whose dating life is amazing, right? On Tinder, you're trying to meet somebody who you've never met before, a total stranger, and you're trying to convince them within 0.2 seconds that you are worthy. And so the girl looks at your profile and in a split second, she's like, nope. And you're like swiped out of existence, you know, not worthy of reproduction. <laughs> um, on Instagram, on the other hand, I'm not even trying really to meet strangers. Really, I, I don't slide into girls DMs. First, I don't have time for that and it makes me not feel masculine to be like, hi, your pictures are hot. I use Instagram to stay in touch with the people that I meet in real life, okay? It's not a tool to get new people into my life, to, to expand the funnel. That I do with all the other things that I will talk about uh, in the next videos. It's for me to to cement and to to, to strengthen the relationship that I started in real life. Because sometimes, you know, I might meet somebody literally for three minutes, you know, I might get introduced to someone in a club and she's a really beautiful girl, but you know, she's busy, she's with a group, I see, I cannot just sit down with her now for two hours and get to know her, but I, get, I can get Instagram. Uh, and usually beautiful girls have a very low resistance to sharing Instagram, it's totally okay, it's nothing that needs to be convincing these days. So that's a good start. And then over a long time, I can get to know her better and mainly give her the chance to get to know me better. Versus again on Tinder, it's like I have literally like one swipe time to convince someone. And is that really the game you wanna play? Is that really the game you wanna play for the rest of your life? I don't think so. We do things online and we're gonna do things online for the next many years. You know, we do stuff online. We probably even in the metaverse, you know? And if you don't firstly accept that and work towards that and not against it, you are gonna be way less significant than you should be. You know, you don't wanna be illiterate. You don't wanna be a guy who can't read or write in the 21st century. It's kind of the equivalent, you know? So that means you should have a basic understanding of how to present yourself online, how to create a basic profile, how to storytell, how to do visual storytelling, because obviously Instagram is mainly a visual platform, how to not be cringy, <laughs> say it bluntly. Uh, you know, what, what uh, comes across as cringy, what's not, da da da. What do people care about, what not, what drives engagement, and I'm not even saying in a like, business way, but what makes people like, uh, what captures their attention and makes, makes them remember you based on something you post, you know? If you don't develop a sense for that, uh, an understanding for that and a skill for that, you know, you were just ignorant a little bit and maybe proud to be not online, but it's not gonna help you, you know? Social media detoxes and like distraction detoxes are good. I do that as well, but being totally ignoring that whole world, it's, uh, it's a bad cost benefit. Now, it's not rocket science, you know? 
I created a free part course totally for free it's free videos so within like 50 minutes you can uh, get a head start on all of what I just mentioned just click below you can start it for free you just put your email in and you get the guide into your email inbox and that gives you a good understanding if you're now like oh yeah probably I should learn a little bit about this uh, usually the stuff I teach in this free course I only give to the elite clients uh, that come on our four to five figure workshops but I want to make it more accessible to people online so I created this guide so we talked about tinder can be an option if you do it perfectly fine and you're in a very high percent of people uh, and if you're crushing it on tinder congratulations I'm happy for you uh, I just in my personal experience met a lot of guys who are not uh, or who are a little bit frustrated and they want to learn about more options and we talked a little bit about social media uh, as I said if you want to know more about it click the link below now in the next video of this mini series of social income streams I will talk about social circle how to meet people in social environments and not just meet but how to turn them into dates and into lovers and into beautiful romantic uh, experiences so stay tuned next video is here see you